Hey everyone, I'm Zach from Action VFX, and today we're going to be finishing up this VFX shot from our Large Scale Dust Waves collection. In part one of this tutorial, we looked at how to work with the Large Scale Dust Waves and utilize the render passes in the multi-channel EXRs. If you missed part one, be sure and go watch it because today we're moving on to creating the meteors. This is a pretty simple setup using 3D lights and trap code particular. The lights are used to build the path for the meteor, and then particular is used to create the fire and smoke. I'm going to go ahead and delete the meteors so we can rebuild them. Let's start by creating the paths of the meteors using 3D lights. I'll create a new 3D light, move the layer down to be with my first impact, and rename the layer. Since Particular will be using this light as an emitter, the name will need to start with Emitter 1. I'm going to copy the position of the Impact 1 null to the light I just created and add a keyframe where the impact starts. Then I will back up about 20 frames and move the meteor up and to the right to create another keyframe. If you aren't able to see the motion pass like I have showing here, you can go to View, View Options, and turn on Motion Paths. This will help visualize the path that the meteor will take. To make the path a little less perfect, we can add a wiggle expression to our position. Now I'm going to follow the same steps to make the path for the second impact. This light will need to be named Emitter 2 so that Particular knows that it is a separate emitter from our first meteor. To make this shot more interesting, I'm going to create some paths for additional meteors in the background. I'm going to keep the names the exact same for all of these new background emitters, so that I only need to create one look inside of Particular that can be used for all the background meteors. Now let's jump into Particular and start setting up the particle emitters. I'm going to start with a new solid and apply Particular to it. This is going to be the main fire for my first meteor. Inside the emitter master settings, I'm going to change the emitter type to lights. And under light naming, I will set the name starts with setting to emitter 1. This will tell Particular to use the first light we created and named emitter 1. I'm also going to change the direction to directional. To make sure that the emitter stops creating new particles when the meteor strikes the ground, I will need to keyframe the particles per second. On impact, I'm going to set this to 800 and the frame after impact I will set to zero. If any of your elements are showing up black like this, it's because the accepts light setting is turned on. So to fix that, we can go into that layer and turn accepts lights to off. Okay, so since there are so many settings inside of Particular, I've gone ahead and created my final look so that we can easily go through all the settings. First thing I'm going to do though, is move all my layers up above the large scale dust wave back layer so that the meteor is sitting inside of the dust wave. Now let's jump in and take a look. This is the emitter for the main fire. Inside the emitter master settings, we have the keyframe particles per second that we looked at earlier. And we have my velocity settings here. I changed the emitter size here. And then I left the particles per second modifier as light intensity. The nice thing about this is in our light settings, we can add a wiggle expression to our light intensity, and that will give us some randomness as to how many particles are coming out of our emitter. I've done this on all the different lights, and they're all also at a different intensity. You can see that this one is set to 100, so that, that way we don't get any single meteor that looks exactly the same as another. Back inside our main fire emitter, we can look at our particles. So we have the life and the life random here. We have a sprite colorized for our particle type. And then for our texture, we actually have a custom layer where I built some particles. So let's take a look at that. So for our custom particles, I've set up a fire particles comp that's 512 by 512. And inside of there, we have three different layers. All three of these are the free blasters from Action VFX. And I have taken one frame 
from three different clips. I have put a tint on it just to make it black and white. I used Unmolt to take away the black and added two different glows. One smaller glow that's around the center of the bolt and then a wider glow. I just copied these same settings to each of these blasters and then they're just scaled and rotated so that they fit nice and neat inside of this comp. So just like that, we have custom particles for our meteors. So now back in the main comp, I can select my new fire particles layer as the texture for the sprites. So then I took my rotation and I rotated them so that the particles line up with the direction the meteor is moving. Set my size to a thousand, added some size randomness, and then size over life is a nice fall off so that they get smaller as, as their life goes on and they look to be burning out. Add some opacity randomness, and also opacity over life is again another fall off. For the set color, I used over life, and then we have our color over life. So it starts out very hot white, then fades off into an orange. Inside of our shading, just left everything off. In our physics, uh, again, just the, the gravity's at zero, everything's off there. And then I also set this to a screen blending mode. So next I have two different emitters that are for the fire trail. Again, we can look at these settings and see what's going on here. So I have the particles per second that will cut off whenever it reaches the ground. Still the same light, light naming settings. They're both for emitter one because this is for the same meteor. I have my velocity settings here. My emitter size is zero. And inside the particle, we have a little bit longer life this time, some life randomness. And then these are actually accessing a default sprite that Particular has to offer. I've gone in here and under there is smoke and fire. I've selected a particle that I like from that and just used that for the fire that's coming off the back of the meteor. This here is the fire for that layer. I don't have any rotation on this one because it's more of a circular sprite so it really doesn't matter. Still have the sides over life. It actually starts out small, gets larger, and then tapers off. This way we get a nice point to the front of the meteor. and the opacity over life does the exact same thing. So our color over life looks almost identical to the first one. This gives us that nice orange as it fades out. And then I've set this first one to screen. So this top fire trail is actually using those same custom sprites that we made earlier. The ones from the uh, the ones from the free blasters collection and it is using a add mode to get us this really nice hot center and then we have a smoke trail and this smoke trail again is very similar we have particles per second which cuts off after it hits the ground have our velocity settings here then we have our sprite and this is referencing a custom smoke particle so let's take a look at that. So for this custom smoke particles, we have three different fractal noises that are working together to create this. We have our first fractal noise, a second one that's adding some more contrast, and then a higher scale fractal noise. 
So let's jump in here and look at one of these. I have basic fractal type, noise type is linear, and soft clamp on the overflow. Then I've just adjusted the scale and brightness and contrast to get a good look that I like. Complexity is at four, and we have a random seed that is adjusting based on the frame. So all these work together. They do that by using the multiply blending mode. Then we have a vignette, and that's just taking the edges off so that we get a circular particle. Our levels are just boosting the, the whites a little bit, and then we have an unmolt to take away all the black and give us an alpha channel. So that creates our custom smoke particle, very easy to do. And then we have our smoke trail that's using that. So here we've used those custom smoke particles. Have our size, our size random, size over life is actually getting bigger because when you think of smoke, it'll start out and then start spreading. So it'll start at a smaller size and spread out. And then we have our opacity over life, which looks pretty similar to what we were doing with the fire. And those are the particular settings that we have to create this meteor. So let's take a look at our second meteor. Down here, I have almost an identical setup. I've used the same sprites for all the particles. The only major difference is that this lines up with our second impact. We still have our main fire, both fire trails, and our smoke trail. For the background meteors though, to save some computer power and to get some faster renders, I've reduced it to only have two different particle emitters. I have the main particle emitter and the smoke trail. I've taken out the two different additional fire trails because at this distance you really can't see them. And so this is just going to render a lot faster and I can work a lot faster. One thing you've probably noticed is that I have a reflection mat and a meteor mat here. So for each of these meteors, whenever they strike the ground, they're actually gonna show up underneath our dust wave. To fix this, simply created a mat that goes here. And then I used a set mat effect to use that layer as the mat for my meteor. This is on the fire, the fire trails, the smoke trail, it's on all of it. That way we don't see that and it looks like it actually goes into the ground and strikes. Also have a reflection mat here. So you can see here that I have a reflection. I've taken this main fire layer for Meteor 1 and I've duplicated it and I've used the Red Giant Reflection plugin. The awesome thing about this is we can basically set up our ground plane and it will reflect our meteor. Then I've simply created a mat so that we don't get it showing on the ground and only on the water. One final touch, the Red Giant Reflection plugin also lets you add some blur and some softness so that we get a less detailed reflection of what we're seeing up here. Now for the final touch, I've added some ground lighting. I used an exposure effect and keyframed the exposure to add some additional lighting here to the ground as the meteor gets closer. It then quickly fades out with the meteor. Just one small touch to put it over the top. And there you have it. I really enjoyed creating this shot for the Large Scale Dust Waves collection and I hope you have learned a lot from this two-part tutorial. Be sure to subscribe and comment below to let us know what you want to see next. This is Zach from Action VFX. See you next time.